Brand I'm new. from Colorado. Yeah, he should be up here. David's from the city. Yeah. <laughs> What is up guys? We are out here with freshly charged David Brand New. We are trying to tackle, where is it? There's a mountain back here. We're trying to get up there. We got the X-Peak 2.0 torque sensor, 750 watt motor, we got the M24 technology in there. And we've already come up this far. You see where the road is way down there. So we've traversed all this. David's a little gassed, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But honestly, so far we're very impressed with the uh, the climbing capabilities on it. So. We gotta go down this hill, that'll be fun. That'll be the next little clip, and then we're gonna try and make it to uh, the peak up there. It's probably what, 1,200 feet of elevation? Yeah, seems about right, if I had to yeah. measure. Yeah, that's just a good guesstimation. So, let's get into it. loose slate rock. What was it? A lot of loose slate rock. Yes, 100%. So, yeah. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome back to Ride Review. My name is Mitch, and today I'm gonna be telling you a little story about how me and some other YouTubers in the e-bike space got lost in the Phoenix High Desert, almost died, but before we do that, let me give you a little backstory. Why were we all there to begin with? Once or twice a year, Electric, which is probably the most popular e-bike brand in America, invites a bunch of influencers and reviewers out there to test out new products. So this is something that took place about a month and a half ago from the time of putting out this video. Now there was over 40 of us there, but the people that I hung out with the most were Andrew from Freshly Charged and David from David Brand New. If you guys don't know those guys, you should check them out. They put out really good content, uh, very different styles, but it's all really solid content. So we were out there, we were on the X-Peak 2.0. You probably looked at this thumbnail, that's why you're watching this video, you want a little bit more about that. And we will talk about the bike very specifically in how we used it. So for us to be different, we were like, hey, and we thought to ourselves, well, this is the X-Peak 2.0. We should probably take it to a mountain, to the peak, if you will, because that's what this bike was maybe not designed to do, but it's kind of, you know, it's written in between the lines about what this bike can do. Now, we are going to talk about the bike as we kind of go through the story. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to just listen to a story, you want to know more about the bike, I promise you that is all in here. This is very use case base specifics of you know how we use the bikes and how it performed while we we're out there doing honestly some pretty crazy stuff. I think Andrew coined the term. He said, this bike is so good, it can get you into places you shouldn't be. And that was pretty much our experience there. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing to talk about when you are talking about doing any sort of terrain is going to be motor power. So if you've ridden a underpowered bike, you get off road, you get to some hills, it doesn't really do what you want it to do. And the XP 2.0 honestly really blew me away as far as how it was able to perform. So the motor we have in here is an M24 motor. This has 750 watts nominal power and it peaks at 1,310 watts, which is pretty crazy. Now, the reason they're able to do that is they are using a larger controller. So they got a 24 amp controller in here not to get too technical, but in order to really use kind of everything a 750 watt motor has to offer, you have to have a 24 amp controller or above. So if you've ever been on a bike that's got 750 watts or even a thousand watts and it just feels like it's underperforming, it's probably got an 18, 20 amp controller in it. And I've seen that for years. But with the X-Peak 2.0, they've got a large controller in there, which really allows you to take advantage of all the power you have here. Now, as far as torque goes, it's got 85 Newton meters of torque, which on paper is pretty good. I think we see a lot of the hub motors that are sitting around 65 to 70. And here, the 85 Newton meters of torque really felt like quite a lot, it was really able to take us up some pretty steep inclines. There were several times in our four hour journey, which was supposed to be uh, about an hour and a half where we get to a hill and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to start pedaling. So I'm downshifting, I'm holding the throttle and the throttle just kept taking me up the hill, kept taking me up the hill and we didn't have any issues. So in my experience on this, you know, four hour test ride that we did on it, the motor capacity and just how it was able to handle some of this terrain is probably the highlight for me. Now there's some other stuff, we're gonna talk about it later in the video. I was really blown away by the power and the torque that was capable here. Now, if you guys have seen some of the other videos, they talk a lot about the torque sensor that's here. Torque sensor is a new thing for electric. We've seen that come out on the last few bikes. And if you've been on a torque sensor versus cadence sensor, then you kind of know the difference. However, if you haven't, you don't really know what the difference is. A torque sensor basically senses the pressure you're putting down onto the cranks, whereas a cadence sensor has got magnets in there. So it's basically on or off as far as the power goes. So having a torque sensor, it's a little bit more of a 
traditional regular bike riding experience where the more effort you put into it the more you get out of the motor so here we do have a torque sensor however they've got a multiplier you can go in there i think it's p06 i'll have to double check that but basically you can adjust that to where it actually amplifies the the torque curve in a way so if you put in a certain amount of force you get a certain amount out of the motor with a torque sensor when you have the multiplier setting on you actually get more power for the same amount of you know effort that you're putting into it so it feels a little bit more like a cadence sensor in the sense that you get all this power from less input now i mentioned that we were out there for a lot longer than we expected and range was starting to become something that was on the top of mind we're out there in the mountains we got lost a couple of times um, as i already mentioned and so every time i looked down at the battery bar it was pretty much full the whole four hours that we were out there. So the range here, I think is a pretty big improvement, just the way that it's efficiently able to use the battery, even though we were asking a lot of these motors, throttling up a lot of these hills, going down some of these you know crazy down areas. And I think one of the things that really blew me away was the fact that we had the, I believe we had the 15 amp hour batteries, which is what comes stock on the bike. They also have the option for a 20 amp hour battery, which is one of the largest batteries on a single bike, a single battery configuration I think electric has ever offered. And price point, you're like, okay, you know, it's gotta be a battery, what's the price point? Well, right now they're doing their early launch special. And so the 15 amp hour version is $1,399 and the 20 amp hour version is $1,599. So for a 20 amp hour battery, 750 watt motor, 24 amp controller, at the $1,599 price point, it does make this a pretty valuable offer, in my opinion. Just looking at you know some of the other competition and what, and what they're putting out, it's pretty insane. Plus, they also are offering a ton of free accessories, like $365 worth of accessories. There's a lock, there's the fenders, there's the rear rack, there is a seat post suspension. I think there's one other thing. Oh, the light. There's also a light that comes with it. So you get $365 of accessories. You get a 750 watt motor, peaks 1300 watts for the motor and all that's going to cost you 15.99 which again pretty crazy so just it's it's one of those things that i was impressed by when we were there electric was talking about you know sort of their philosophy behind how they're pricing the bikes and what what they're doing in the industry and i was really taken aback by the fact that they wanted to keep their prices as low as possible all right they've already got the most popular brand in america so most people might be like well how can we raise prices how can we make more money and for them they really were like, hey, we wanted to keep the prices exactly the same as the other models. We wanted to see if we could lower the prices. So it was it was a very interesting perspective, you know, being a business owner, watching them do their thing and sort of their philosophy behind it. So I was, I was pretty impressed by that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the terrain that we were able to tackle on some of these bikes. Now, if you've seen some of the B-roll and the ride footage so far, you'll notice that it probably wasn't a bike trail we were on and we didn't find that out till the very end. And I mean the very end. We got out of the mountains, back down to the trail. Uh, we were actually on horse and walking paths. So we were in a spot where these bikes really shouldn't have gone, right? In the sense that like, not from a legal perspective, but they weren't designed to go there. Now, what I was impressed by was the fact that they really did handle that terrain really well. We've got a RST front fork, which has 80 millimeters of travel in it. We've got the 26 by four inch tires with an off-road ready tread. We have, brakes on there which is good all bikes should come with brakes these ones are hydraulic and in the front we actually have a larger 203 millimeter rotor which if you know anything about braking you know a lot of your braking power actually comes from the front so the fact that we got a larger 203 millimeter rotor in the front and then a 180 in the back it's it's a pretty good combination now those are just specs right i could look at a bike and i could i could make all those same statements what really impressed me was the terrain that we were going on, some of the drops, some of the uphills. I felt like we really did have a lot of control with the bikes, especially on the pretty crazy downhill sections. I think those hydraulic brakes did a really, really good job. And you know, those discs were pretty hot uh, on some of those downhills. So from a terrain perspective, I was pretty much blown away by what the bike was able to do. I talked a little bit about the climbing, which was crazy, the power delivery, which was crazy, and then having the you know nice suspension up front. The 26 by four inch tires already have a bigger air volume in it, so it's gonna make it a little bit more comfortable in that type of tumultuous environment. However, I felt like we had really good control. We did some pretty crazy downhills, and then the brakes, I felt like I was completely in control of the bike the whole time. If you've ever been on a bike that either has mechanical brakes or even you know some of the V brakes and you're getting to those downhill sections and you feel like you couldn't stop it, 
you know, it's like you can slow it down, but you're not stopping it. I really felt like we could stop those bikes anytime we wanted to. And yeah, was just, was very impressed with the braking there. Now we talk a lot about UL certification on this channel. We talk about the batteries being UL certified, the bikes being UL certified, but the XP 2.0 is actually EMTB certified, which was, you know, for me, kind of a new one. We don't do a lot of EMTB stuff and I'm not as familiar with some of those rules and how they decide if something's safe for the EMTBs on that side. However, the XP was actually proven to be safe for the EMTB standards, which I thought was pretty impressive for, you know, arguably a consumer level, entry level, affordable, fat tire electric bike. So that part is pretty cool. I'll have a little blurb here about what exactly that means. And I'll probably put a link down there if you're kind of curious like I was as far as how they test it and what standards those actually are when compared to UL and some of the more things we might be familiar with. Now in the end, we did survive, which is how I'm able to make this video. We, uh, we ran out of water, we got lost. It was a little bit sketchy at times, you know, the elevated heart rate, a uh, little bit lightheaded, signs of heat stroke, stuff that, uh, you know, is actually, you know, it wasn't necessarily fun to be out there, but we survived and so, you know, it makes for a good story and I think, uh, you know, some of us are a little bit more bonded for life because of it. So we talked a lot about some of the specs that I really got to test out when we were doing the test ride. If you guys have any questions about specific specs I didn't cover in this video, please let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one. So he was hitting. Oh no. Woo. Yeah, maybe there's a different trail to come down. All right, I think we're almost to a decent stopping point here. <laughs>